Hey everyone, Lewis here for Pixel Surplus, and today we're going to be learning how to warp text into shapes in Adobe Illustrator. But first, be sure to hit the like and subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And whilst you're down there, click the link to Pixel Surplus, and this is going to take you to the font that we'll be using today, Moda. This minimal sans serif font is a bold, chunky font perfect for creating impactful titles and headlines. There's also a follow along at home file, so you can walk through this tutorial with me step by step. Once you've downloaded your follow along at home file and Moda from Pixel Surplus, make sure to install the font and let's load up the Illustrator file so we can begin. Once you open the Adobe Illustrator file, you should be greeted with three red artboards with the logo examples in the top left corner. Let's begin by getting ourselves acquainted with the layers panel. If you don't have access to the layers panel, head to window, layers. Now that you can see the layers panel, you're gonna be able to see three logos and a backgrounds layer. Inside of each logo is going to be an example logo as well as the create here layer. We're going to start with logo one so click the drop down and make sure you're working inside the logo one create here layer. We're also going to need access to the Pathfinder panel. You can do this by heading to window Pathfinder as well as the align panel, window align. Let's begin by creating the diamond shape. Hit M on your keyboard to access the rectangle tool. Hold shift whilst dragging to create a square. Next, hit I to access the eyedropper tool and choose the beige from the example logo. Press V on your keyboard to access your selection tool. Head to one of the corners until you see the rotation icon. Hold shift and rotate 45 degrees. Next, let's access the scale tool by choosing this icon on your tool panel or by hitting S on your keyboard, grab the left or right anchor point and drag away to create a similar diamond to the one you see in the example. Let's make a copy of this diamond shape and move it to one side so we can use it again later. To stop our text from warping right to the corners of our diamond, we're going to need to chop each end of our diamond off. Hit M on your keyboard to access the rectangle tool and draw a square that covers a portion of your diamond. With the selection tool activated, hold Alt and shift drag across to create an exact copy. Now let's select both of our new squares and group them by hitting Ctrl G on your keyboard. We now need to make sure that our squares are centered aligned to our diamond. So select our group squares. Whilst holding shift, select our diamond, then let go of shift and click once more onto our diamond to make this a key object. Head to our align panel and center align horizontally and vertically. With all of them still selected, head to our pathfinder panel and choose trim. Now access your direct select tool with A on your keyboard. Hold shift and choose both of our squares and hit delete. Now it's time to add the text to our shape. So hit T on your keyboard to access the type tool, type out long road and make sure that you're using Moda as your font. Select the text, hit I on your keyboard to access the eyedropper tool and choose the color from the example above. Move the text so it's touching the shape we just created. We're going to have to bring our shape to the front to perform the envelope distort. You can do this by hitting shift, control and close square brackets on your keyboard. Now with your selection tool, make sure to select both the shape above and the text below and let's perform our envelope distort. You can do this by either heading to Object, Envelope Distort, and Make with Top Object, or hit Alt, Control, C. 
With your selection tool, grab the diamond shape that we had copy and pasted previously, drag it below our text and scale it so it overhangs like the example. Let's make sure both the shape and the text are correctly aligned. So whilst holding shift, select long road and the diamond. Now let go of shift and select the diamond again to create a key object. Now hit the vertical and horizontal align to center. Let's create our gray stroke around our diamond by copying with control C and pasting behind with control B. Now with your selection tool, grab one of the anchor points and hold shift and alt to scale proportionately from the center until you have a similar stroke to the example above. With your new diamond still selected, hit the eyedropper tool and choose the gray that we used for long road. Finally, let's add the 1993. You can do this by hitting T on your keyboard to access the type tool, typing 19, and with your 19 still selected, hit the eyedropper tool and change the color to the gray that we used for long road. Now drag the 19 to match the example above with a similar scale. Once you've found where you like, hold Alt and Shift, drag the 19 across to the right hand side and change the text to 93. And there you have it, how to warp text to a diamond shape in Adobe Illustrator. Next, let's go on to Logo 2. Be sure to head to your Layers panel and make sure Logo 1 is locked and that you're working inside the Logo 2 Create Here layer. The skills that we've learned in Logo 1 are going to be translated to Logo 2. It's just used in slightly different shapes. For Logo 2, we're going to be learning how to warp text into a parallelogram. This could work for a rectangle, square, basically anything with four corners. Let's begin by creating our parallelogram. We're going to use the rectangle tool to draw out a rectangle similar to the example above. Once you have your rectangle, we're going to choose the direct select tool, choose the two anchor points on the right side of our rectangle and drag them up, creating this dynamic parallelogram shape. Once you're happy with your shape, let's select it and whilst holding Alt, create a copy of our parallelogram. Position our shape so that the left edge is at the center point of the top shape and that they slightly overlap. And finally, using the eyedropper tool, make sure our colors match the example above. Great, now select both of our shapes and make a copy so that we can use it again later. Next, let's use the type tool to type out Long Road and Paving Co. Once again, make sure you're using Moda as your font. Select both the pieces of text and use the eyedropper tool to make sure the colors match the example in the left hand corner. Now let's take our Long Road type and drag it so that it's touching our beige shape. Now let's bring our shape to the front by selecting it and hitting Control shift closed square bracket. Now select the shape and the text and perform our envelope distort. You can do this by hitting control alt C. Now let's do the same with paving co. Bring your text above the shape, bring the shape to the front with shift control close square bracket and select both the text and the shape and perform our envelope distort by hitting control Alt C. Next, let's head back to the shapes that we'd copy and pasted earlier. Let's group them with Control G and center them to the artboard. You can do this by heading to your align panel, choosing artboard and hitting the vertical and horizontal center align. Let's do the same thing with our text. So select both pieces of text, group them and center align them to our artboard. They should match our background perfectly. Now with your direct select tool, 
click on one piece of text, right click and head to transform and then scale. We're going to uniform scale at 80%. Now go ahead and do the same with the second piece of text. So direct select, right click, transform, scale, uniformed 80%. Now let's make the path around our shape. We can do this by selecting our group shape, copy and pasting it in place, heading to the Pathfinder tool and choosing Unite. Now with our new shape, select it, head to Properties and let's add a stroke of the same gray. I'm going to go for a stroke of about 20 points. Finally, let's push it to the back of our artwork by hitting Control, Shift, open square brackets. There you go, logo 2 complete. And now you have the knowledge of how to warp any text into square or rectangular shapes in Adobe Illustrator. Now it's time for logo 3. Quickly head to the layers panel and make sure you're working inside the logo 3 create here layer. This logo is a culmination of everything we just learned. It uses both the diamond or rhombus shape as well as the parallelogram. So I know you guys are going to absolutely nail it. First, let's begin by creating our shapes. We're going to go ahead and make another parallelogram like we did in logo 2. Once you're happy with your shape, let's create a copy by selecting and holding Alt. Now select your new shape right click and head to transform we're going to use the reflect and make sure it's the vertical reflect at 90 degrees click ok now you have a mirror image of your first shape we're going to make sure that they're touching and look like the example in the top left corner once you have them in the right position we're going to select both head to our pathfinder panel and choose unite finally Select the eyedropper tool and choose the color from the logo example. Now it's time to create our rhombus shape. We're going to use the rectangle tool to draw a square. Once you have your square, rotate it 45 degrees and take the top point so that it matches the inside of our arrow shape. It should look something like this. Next we're going to use a ruler. If you don't have your rulers on your artboard, you can hit Ctrl R to bring up your rulers. Head to the top and drag down a ruler so that it touches the corner points of our arrow shape. Once you have your ruler in place, you're going to select your square and scale it so that the middle corners touch our new ruler line. With your square still selected, we're going to use the scale tool so hit S on your keyboard and grab the outside corner of your square, dragging it so that it touches the bottom right hand corner of our arrow shape. It should look something like this. And finally, select your rhombus shape and using the eyedropper tool, select the grey from the example logo. Now let's create a copy of our shapes. Select both, hold Alt and drag away to create a copy. It's time to type out our text. So hit T on your keyboard to bring up your type tool and type out Long Road and Paving Co. And as always, make sure you're using Moda as your font. Select both sets of text and use the eyedropper tool to change the color to match the example. Now let's drag the Long Road above our arrow shape, bring the arrow to the front with shift control, close square brackets, select both, and let's do our envelope distort by hitting control, alt, C. Like in logo one, we're going to need to get rid of the corners of our rhombus so that our text sits nicely. So create a square, copy that square using the alt and drag method. Let's group both of our squares and let's center align them using our rhombus as our key object. Now select the grouped squares and our diamond shape and head to our Pathfinder tool and use Trim. Now with your Direct Select tool activated, select both of our squares and hit Delete. 
Now let's drag a paving co onto our new chopped diamond shape. Make sure our shape's in front with control, shift, close square bracket. Select both the shape and the type and perform our envelope distort. Let's group our text using control G and center align it to our artboard. Let's also group the shapes that we created earlier and center align those to our artboard as well. Now let's scale our text. Hit A on your keyboard to bring up your direct select. Select long road, right click, transform, and transform and scale. We're going to uniform scale at 80%. Just make sure your long row text is centered in your arrow shape. I like to use the arrows on my keyboard to move it a few pixels at a time until I'm happy. Next, let's scale our paving co text. So with your direct select tool, right click, transform, and scale. We're going to scale paving co at 90%. With your paving co selected, use the down arrow key to move paving co until it just touches the bottom of our rhombus. Finally, let's make the stroke for our logo. So with your selection tool activated, select our grouped shape and create a copy. Now let's zoom right in and make sure that all of our anchor points are touching. We need a nice smooth shape with no jagged edges. So use your direct select tool and spend some time just to make sure you get it right. Once you're happy that your anchor points are touching, select our grouped shape, head to Pathfinder and use the Unite tool. Let's center align our shape to the middle of our artboard, head to properties, and let's add a stroke of gray at about 40 points. Finally, if it's at the front, let's move it to the back by hitting control, shift, open square brackets. And there you have it. After this tutorial, you are now a master of warping text into shapes in Adobe Illustrator. Everyone's gonna be super jealous. Please like and subscribe and ring that little bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And whilst you're down there, why don't you hit the links to Moda as well as Pixel Surplus. Pixel Surplus is home to the best premium and free fonts, as well as mockups, templates, illustrations, textures, and so much more. And did I mention we have the best font bundles on the internet? Dozens of premium fonts, all in one bundle for a fraction of the cost. Seriously, you need to check these out right now. I've been Lewis from Pixel Surplus. You've been amazing. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day, everyone.